blow up holes suck. There's nothing worse than seeing a double, triple, or worse on a scorecard. Not only is it gonna crush your score, it's gonna kill your confidence. So today, I wanna take you through five proven tips to help you reduce blow up holes so you can play more consistently and shoot lower scores fast. Otherwise, you're gonna continue to make those big numbers that makes golf not very fun and probably never reach your potential. Make sure to watch until the end too because number five to me is the most common among amateur golfers and probably one of the reasons you're not breaking 80 consistently. Now, why do blow up holes happen? Five main reasons. One of them is from missing short putts, which leads to high emotions on that next tee box, which can lead to irrational decisions. Dr. Izzy Justice of Jira Golf found that the hardest shot mentally in golf is the one after a short missed putt. And this is probably makes sense too. Imagine you're on the fifth hole, you miss a like two and a half, three footer, you get up on that six tee box, chances are you're overly emotional. Not only is it physically harder to swing the club like you normally do, mentally your thoughts are everywhere. So one of the easiest ways to avoid blow up holes and getting so emotional on the next one, of course, is to make more short putts. Now, how do we do that? Here are three easy ways. Number one is to always mark your golf ball. Even if you have, you know, a two, three, four footer, make sure that you're marking it, going through your routine, and not just getting up there and hitting it. Otherwise, you're just gonna be wasting shots every single round. Number two is to have a consistent pre-shot putting routine. If you don't have any sort of putting routine, chances are your mind is all over the place, you're not committed on the line, not committed on the pace, and chances are you're gonna miss a lot of them. So make sure you have a consistent putting routine. And the third way to make more short putts is to spend less time over the golf ball. A European tour study found that when amateur golfers spend less time over the golf ball, their chances of making short putts increase dramatically. So spend about six seconds or so over the ball and then go. Otherwise, you're gonna miss a lot of short putts that can lead to high emotions on the next hole and chances are a blow up hole. Now, if you do miss a short putt, we gotta still calm down by the time it's that next tee box. Here's how. Number one is to take a big, deep breath. We have to keep breathing, maybe even try out box breathing if you get super emotional after that short putt. Second thing is to walk slowly to the next tee box. Do not go straight to your bag, grab driver, and rush to that next tee box. Go slowly, let your mind know, hey, we're not in a fight or flight state, we can calm down. And the third thing is to make sure to actually hit the right club. If you're planning on hitting driver, great, keep with it. But if you feel like maybe it's a three wood and you're still trying to hit driver because you're overly emotional from that missed putt, make sure you take the right club so that way you're not setting yourself up for a blow up hole on the sea box. Now, the second reason for blow up holes is hero golf. Don't get me wrong, I love Marvel and DC superheroes. Batman is definitely the best. But when you're out of position is not the time to try and act like a hero. A lot of times we'll hit a bad drive and then we'll say, hey, I got this little window I can hit through or I think I can hit this miracle shot. While those shots are fun to hit sometimes, chances are they're gonna lead to some big blow up holes because how many times have you tried to punch a shot through a window or hit over a tree only to hit a bad shot, the ball comes right back down and now you've not only wasted a shot, you have to figure out the next shot, you're super emotional and chances are you're not gonna make a great swing or great decisions. So we wanna make sure when we're out of position that we get back into the hole. Always ask yourself the question, how can I make bogey or better? Remember, bogeys are not the end of the world. All it takes is one birdie to make them up and you can still make seven bogeys during the round if you make the rest pars and still break 80. So bogeys are not gonna kill your round or your confidence, doubles and triples obviously will. Don't forget the PGA Tour average is only 58% fairways while scratch golfers only average about 50% of fairways. So if you do miss and end up in the rough, one, don't beat yourself up, that's gonna happen. And if you do give yourself in some tough spots, you gotta forgive yourself. Beating yourself up for hitting a big slice or a big hook and getting yourself under a tree or in a fairway bunker is not gonna help things. Forgive yourself, make a strategy for how you can make bogey or better and go. The third reason blow up holes happen a lot with amateur golfers is just a lack of commitment. If you're not 100% sure on your target and club selection, chances are you're gonna be standing over the golf ball too long, you're gonna get thinking a little bit too much, and studies show that anytime you spend more than eight seconds over the ball, your performance declines. So we wanna make sure that you're 100% committed and walk into the shot with confidence. Now, how do you do that? You have to give your mind a clear picture of the shot you wanna hit. You can do this a few different ways too. You can visualize like a shot tracer going at your target. You can verbalize it and talk it out. Or if you're a field player, you can try and feel the swing that you need to make. But you need to give your mind and body clear instructions of the shot you wanna hit. 
When you do, it'll make a massive difference on actually hitting that shot. As Dr. Maxwell Maltz said in the book Psycho-Cybernetics, when you see a thing clearly in your mind, your creative success mechanism within you takes over and does the job much better than you could by conscious effort or willpower. So imagine this, you have a 150 yard shot, that's a perfect eight iron for you. When you're behind the golf ball, you wanna just be back there saying, all right, this is a great eight iron. I'm gonna aim at that tree. I'm gonna start it just at the left side. It's gonna fade a little bit. You're really getting clear. Again, you can verbalize it, you can visualize it, you can feel it out, but we gotta give our mind clear instructions. Take a practice swing or two. Once you feel good about it, then we'd walk into the shot. At this point, hopefully you have all the commitment that you need to execute. If you hit a bad shot, that's okay, but you know at least you were mentally prepared. If you do still hit a big pull or a big slice, then you know it's a mechanical issue. And I'm gonna get more into routines in just a second, but when you have that kind of confidence and clarity, it'll make a massive difference in your game. Make sure you're 100% committed to every shot, chip, and putt, and I guarantee you're gonna reduce blow up holes. The fourth reason most of us blow up on the golf course is because we're firing at the flag too often. Imagine this, we hit a great drive off the tee. You get up there, you out drove your buddies, you're feeling good, you can't believe how good it is, and now you think, it's time to get one back. I'm gonna fire at the flag. I've been there so many times, I can imagine it right now. And sometimes that is the right strategy, depending on where the flag is. The problem is, is that most of us aim at the flag when we have no business of doing so. So let's say it's tucked behind a bunker and you know that your bunker game has some work to do. Let's say you hit it good, but you just didn't club right and now it's in the bunker. Now all of a sudden you're trying to get up and down, but maybe it takes you two to get out, maybe you two putt, you made double or worse. Or you do go right at it, you hit it good, but then you hit a big miss. Now you're short-sided, you have to chip over the bunker or you're in some deep grass, and now maybe you don't even get on and all of a sudden a double bogey comes into play. Now sometimes you should fire at the flag, but usually when the flag is more in the middle of the green. The problem is, is that most of us play too aggressive, we end up short-siding ourselves, which invites double bogeys or worse. Not to mention there's nothing worse than feeling like you wasted a drive making bogey, double, or worse. So yes, when you're in fairway, you can play a little bit more aggressively than when you're in the rough, but you wanna favor the middle of the green, especially outside 150 yards. From there, your shot dispersion is gonna be much wider and we need to make sure we're getting on the dance floor before we go pin seeking. To learn when to fire at the flag and when not, learn Decade Golf. This system has revolutionized my game, used by tons of PGA Tour players, amateur golfers, and college players. So if you're committed and you wanna learn how to pick targets, how to aim properly, when to go for the flag, when not to, Decade is for you. If you're ready to get started with Decade, make sure to use the code WICKEDSMART and you'll save 20% on your subscription. Fifth reason that blow up holes happen a lot is because you have no pre-shot routine. Pre-shot routines are talked about a lot on this channel because I really think it's the one thing that all great golfers have in common. You don't have to have a consistent routine like Tiger or Justin Thomas or whoever your favorite golfer is, but you want to make sure to have a routine that sets you up for success. Here's what short game guru Dave Pels had to say about the importance of a pre-shot routine. In the book, Short Game Bible, he said, a good pre-shot ritual gives your subconscious a countdown, which lets every part of your body know when things are going to happen. A good pre-shot routine is gonna help you mentally and physically prepare. So we talked about it a little bit already. We wanna have confidence, clarity, and commitment to the shot. And a good routine is how you have that happen. So imagine you're behind the golf ball, you laser the flag, you figure out your distance, you figure out the club, you figure out your target, then the routine really needs to happen. You walk into the shot, you get into your stance, you look at the target one to two times, you maybe think about your swing thought or the target depending on which one you prefer, and then you swing. Your body knows exactly what to do because it's that same ritual, that same timing over and over again. If you do not have a pre-shot routine, I guarantee you are wasting three to five or more shots every single round. Develop your routine. I have no doubts it'll help you reduce blow up holes and play better fast. If you need help with your routine, make sure to watch these videos next or download my free pre-shot routine checklist, which I'll link to down below, or you can go to wickedsmartgolf.com forward slash routine dash checklist.